Well, we've discovered a diesel leak inside of Sparrow, our Cape Dory 28. So today we're going to try to put in a new tank and hopefully that solves the problem. It's only one leak at the bottom of the tank, but here's what we found. First telltale sign, the off-road diesel on the bilge. After I found diesel on the bilge, I started hoping it was something easy like a fuel line and I started tracing every little bit that could be fuel coming out and eventually found at the bottom of the aluminum tank um, had a nice puddle there and I found the drip itself. So um, it's kind of well known on these old Cape Dories that the aluminum tanks are rested onto a uh, just a piece of wood and that wood in constant contact with the aluminum tank just eventually corrodes it. So what we bought is a plastic composite tank from Moeller. Um, which looks like it'll last forever. So hopefully it's a direct replacement and I bought the right size. There's our new tank. Little lash down brackets that'll hopefully fit. And a new 12 gallon tank. Looks like it should last at least as long as the boat. And the old tank. Been running it trying to empty the fuel out. Of course, everything is stuck. At the bottom of this tank, you can see I put a, a petroleum absorbent pad to sop it up. It's not a fast enough leak to register onto the gauge, but it's enough to discolor the bilge water pretty heartily. All right, here's old tank versus new tank. Uh, looks like I didn't buy the exact size, but there's plenty of room to make the new one fit. What this tank doesn't have is the return. All right, old tank's out. Quarter of a tank, probably about uh, three gallons still in there, but I'll take care of that. I was starting to get a little worried that maybe I made a mistake because the bottom of this tank looks so good. I was like, there's no possible way it's, there's a hole and it's leaking. So I'm shaking it around and look right here, that little tiny piece of corrosion. You see it seeping? Oh, that's been my worries and problems. That was, that was enough to fill up the bilge. Oh. All right, so we have an expanded hole. I cut it out about three inches on the port side. And I left the box in place, but I cut off the port side of the box. Now it's just big enough to have to slide in. It's a nice fit. What I've done is I've left at least a half inch gap on all sides of it because these plastic tanks will expand 1.03%, which turns out to be anywhere from 0.4 to 0.6 inches all the way around. Now, you got to find a way to lash it down. The tank came with little lash down points, so I bought the little aluminum brackets. And what I'm going to do is create basically a strap board that will bolt down into the base of that box that I just cut into and boom, lash it down. What I'm thinking for the backside, which is a lot harder to reach with screws and screwdriver, is I'm gonna lash it down with just an old battery box strap. And I'll use the same thing with a half inch piece of furring strip. I'll screw down the strap, lash it over the top, and it should hold it down nice and tight, at least tighter than it was before. All right, here's what we got. The front side 
we use our, or I'm sorry, the aft edge. We use our metal bracket lockdowns. Since I can't get to the side under the galley very easily, we're just gonna strap it down. This little battery strap. So each of these are built on the build platform, raises it up a good half inch, which will give it plenty of clearance on the top, plenty of clearance on the sides, but still be held down tighter than it ever was before. coming all the way across where I can barely reach. I figured doing a diagonal strap in a spot that I can easily access when I need to take the takeout would be just as secure and just as functional but more easily accessible. Thank you. 